My name is William Justice. In my last video, I used a bit of tracking and some expressions to control the playback of media in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. In the end, it worked great, but I did have a few problems getting the tracking to work properly when I first set up the video. I fought this for quite a while, actually way too long, but eventually I won the battle. There's a link to the video here and in the video description if you want to check it out. So, are you using tracking in your videos and having a little bit of trouble getting it to work properly? What do you do? I'm gonna show you a few quick things I did in my last video that might help you out. The YouTube Chapter Generator. The new YouTube Chapters feature is great. It allows you to easily create sections in your video timelines that allow viewers to jump directly to those areas of your videos to find the information that they're looking for. I've created an experimental YouTube Chapter Generator on my website, BillJustice.com. It's really simple to use. You can add markers into your timeline in DaVinci Resolve for each of your chapters, export that data, and run it through my generator to have all the timestamps and labels already done. You just copy that and paste it directly into your videos. For anyone that creates YouTube videos, stick around to the end of this video and I'll show you how to use it. It's super easy. If you enjoy my videos and want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I really appreciate your support. Let's talk about tracking. The built-in trackers in Resolve do a fantastic job. But depending on your video, sometimes they may have a little trouble tracking some of the pattern. So here's the video that caused problems with my tracking. The video quality is pretty bad, there's a whole lot of noise, and the lighting was not very good. As I move my finger, the, pat the shape of the pattern changes, so the tracker needs to adjust to what it's looking for throughout the video. And also, my finger moves across several areas of the screen that go from dark to light, which can confuse the tracker as it's trying to follow the pattern of my finger. So what can we do to get better tracking? Let's go into Fusion and find out. All right, we have the clip loaded into Fusion. This was the one that was giving me a little bit of trouble tracking. I was trying to track the positions of both of my fingertips. Let's add a tracker so I can show you what was happening. So with the media in one selected, hit Control Space and search for tracker, add that in. With the tracker added, let's go to the first frame of the video. The tracker box is this green box here. This lets us set which pattern in our video we're wanting to track. There's this little uh, square right here in the upper left-hand corner of the inner box. You can click that and it'll zoom in and allow you to pick the pattern. So I'm gonna pick my finger. We're gonna put it right on my finger there. You can adjust the inner box to set the pattern you're looking for, and the outer box is the search area. So as the video plays, it's gonna be looking for the inner pattern within the search box. All right, we'll set this up, and to track this pattern, what you can do is you go over to the controls in the inspector, and we're gonna hit this one on the far right, which is track forward. Let's see what happens. We'll stop it, and as you can see, the, the tracker followed this green line here, and it totally lost the position of my fingertip. If you have a good video, you're pretty much done, and you got everything tracked. And looking at the video, you can see that my finger crosses several parts so that there's real good contrast here. The tracker's looking for contrast. As it goes through, it goes through a dark part to a light part. So there's a lot of patterns that maybe could be similar to my finger. Um, you have this, the countertop here and some of these lines going like this. And also the pattern changes. You can see that my finger's pointing up a little more here, and as the video goes, it's actually pointing down. So we have um, noisy video, um, some background patterns, and the, the search pattern it's looking for actually changes. So the first thing I did is I got the, uh, the search box, and I tried a lot of different things. I made it smaller, bigger. I tried uh, tracking the very edge of my finger, moving it over, adjusting the, uh, the search box there. And basically, it kind of did the same thing every time. Um, it would go off. Sometimes it would do a little bit better, but that really wasn't fixing my problem. So since the, uh, the search pattern box and the search area box were not working for me, I decided to go to the documentation to see what some of these other options do. The first thing I looked at was the adaptive mode right here. Um, the adaptive mode basically tells the tracker how to interpret the pattern. When adaptive mode is set to none, the pattern is acquired when you first start tracking, and that becomes the only pattern that's used during the track. When every frame is chosen, the search pattern is acquired when you first start tracking, and then it's reacquired for every frame. So the pattern at frame one is used to search on frame two, and the pattern found on frame two is used to search frame three, and so on. This method helps the tracker adapt to changing conditions in the pattern. For best match tracking, it works kind of in the same way as every frame, except that it won't reacquire the pattern if the difference between the original frame and the pattern that it's looking for is too great. And this helps prevent cases where temporary changes in the image can cause the tracker to become confused. So the difference between best match and every frame is, for example, say if a shadow passes through the tracking point. Every frame might pick up that shadow and start following the shadow, whereas best match would see that as a big difference in the pattern 
and it wouldn't start tracking it quite yet. It's gonna wait a little longer to see if that pattern stays along with the image. Anyway, I tried several different versions of this, several different variations of best match every frame. It seemed to do a little bit better, but it really wasn't fixing my problem. The next thing I looked at was adjusting the search area. And this is this box right here. In this case, I know my finger's really only gonna be going up and down. So you can set the search area to go up and down and follow the motion of what you're being, what's being tracked. This can help refine what, what you're looking at to get a little bit better track. I tried playing around with that, helped a little bit. Again, it didn't really fix my problem. Okay, let's open up the inspector a bit, full screen. And then I started looking at this area down here. And right here, you'll actually see the pattern that's being tracked. So as we take this box and adjust it, you'll see this is what's being tracked. For the best tracking, you wanna find some high contrast patterns that are visible throughout the full range of the video, where the pattern doesn't change too much over time. For example, light on dark. So you can see right here, there's a good dark area around the light part of my fingertip. But when we move the, the video forward, let's go take a look at this. You can see right here, this is what the tracker's looking at. There's a lot less contrast between the dark and light areas. What I, what I set out to do was to try to get a higher contrast image. So what I did that helped me out here was I added a bitmap node. Let's click in the node area, control space, and search for bitmap. Add that in, and we'll put that right into our node tree here. You notice it knocks everything out. What we can do is change the channel that the bitmap is using, and let's put it on saturation. Let's see if we can add a bit more contrast in here to help the tracker out. Um, we can use these levels here, the high and low. So we're gonna make the background a little bit darker. Okay, so we've got a bit more contrast. This is really dark in here, and my finger's gonna be a little bit lighter. So this may help the tracker. Let's see what happens. Let's go over to the tracker, we'll reset everything, and we'll take the track position. Actually, let's go to the first frame and take the track position and put it right on top of my finger. And you can see there we got some light area right on dark. So let's see if this helps the tracker out. Let's hit uh, track forward. Okay, so it uh, looks like we have a pretty good track there. Um, obviously, you don't want a black and white video, so we don't really need one. We can take the bitmap node and delete it. And the tracker's still there, and it still kept all our track points. Let's reset the tracker. We're going to try a couple more things here. You'll notice down here in the tracker, let's take the tracker and put it right over my finger, like that. And you notice there's different channels. This actually tells the tracker what to look for. So the default case here is it's actually looking at the luminance, and that's why the bitmap helped us out, because it made more exaggerations in the luminance. You can also look for alpha, right there, or any of these other channels. So we, if we hit uh, the red channel, you see that my, there's a little bit of red in my finger, so the finger got brighter. One of the things is because when I saw this, um, this alpha, I thought it might be interesting to see if we can use some keying to do some tracking. So with the media in one selected, hit control space, and let's search for the, the ultra keyer. And we'll hit uh, two on the ultra keyer so we can see it. We'll take the eyedropper and let's put it right on where my finger is. Anything that's the color of my finger is going to be transparent. So we can hit this, uh, this icon up here to see the alpha channel. And you'll see that it's really, really good. We got the dark on light. So let's go back over to the tracker and see what happens. So we'll go to the tracker. We're going to reset it and take this box and put it right on top of where my finger is. Right there. Right now we're looking at the luminance value. But if we switch it to alpha, all of a sudden you can see the pattern is a real good dark on light where it's looking at the alpha channel as opposed to the luminance. And let's track it and see what happens. All right, that looks like we got a really good track and we don't need the, the uh, ultra key anymore because we already have the track data set. So let's just delete it. I experimented with the color corrector and some of these different color levels. They, they helped out a little bit. Even coming into the tracker and telling the tracker to look at the red channel helped out a little bit when my finger was there. Um, I tried the edge detect, which was interesting. Let's add that in. So that actually puts a little more contrast around where my finger is and you, you could adjust some of these things. I think I got that working a couple times, but it wasn't quite as good as the other methods. The keyer and the bitmap seem to, seem to create the best contrast to use for the tracker. Last thing I just wanted to cover real quick was how to attach something to the tracker. We'll take this little tracking graphic I made and drag that in and we'll connect it up to the green input on the tracker. It's not really doing anything right now. So all we need to do is go to the tracker and go to this second option up here called operation and we're gonna set it to match move. And what that means is the graphic that we added in is gonna match the movement of the tracker. So let's take the MIDI in and add a transform, and we're just gonna bring it up to where my finger is. That's gonna move it into position. Just like that, it's gonna follow where my finger goes. Okay, bonus time. The YouTube Chapter Generator. YouTube Chapters are a new feature that's recently been added. They allow viewers to visually see different sections within your video. 
This is great for people that are looking for specific information because they can jump right to that part in your video. So far, I've been creating my YouTube chapters manually by scrubbing through videos, finding times, and then typing that information into the descriptions for each of my videos. It takes a little bit of time, it's not too hard, but I was wondering if there might be a quicker and easier way. Now there may be a better way to do this, but this is what I came up with to try something out. In Resolve, open your main timeline. Find where you want to have a chapter and hit the M key to set a marker. Then hit the M key again to open up the marker information window. You can change the marker color, set a marker name, which we're gonna use for our chapter name or enter a comment. Let's add a few more markers for each of the chapters that we want in our video. Okay, so how do we convert these markers to YouTube chapters? Make sure your timeline is open and then go into the media pool. Right click on your timeline in the media pool, choose the timelines menu, select export, and then choose timeline markers to EDL. I know it sounds kind of scary, but it's really super simple. It's just generating a text file that has all the information about the times for your markers and the marker names. Once you've chosen that option, enter a file name and save your marker information. Let's call it markers.edl and save it. Let's open the file up and take a look and see what's inside. You can see all the times and marker information. It's got the colors and names. Now we could edit this file and move some stuff around to get that information for the time and the name out of it, but there might be a little bit faster way. If you go to buildjustice.com, you can click on the YouTube chapters tool. It's in, the, it's in the resources menu, or you can click the icon on the homepage. Now, I may be changing the graphics. You might have to search for um, uh, YouTube chapters, but it should be pretty easy to find. So once we click on that, all we need to do is take the text from the EDL file and paste it in. So let's see what happens. Now we have all our chapters. It's stripped out all the extra information. We just need to copy the chapter text and paste it into our video description and YouTube knows exactly where each of our sections start. Okay, a couple things to note for the chapters. Um, for the chapters to show up, you have to have the zero zero at the very beginning with a name. You can, it doesn't have to be enter, you can change it to whatever you want, but that's what YouTube cues in on to know that you're setting up a chapter list. Now, if you use markers for other things besides the chapters, that's where the colors come in. So you could have your chapter markers be a certain color and then use other colors for different kinds of markings within your videos. There's a little drop down box right under there. You can choose it and it'll, it allows you to select what color you want to use for your YouTube chapter markers and it'll strip out everything that's not that color. So you can actually use markers for other things and chapters as well. So this tool is very experimental. I really haven't tried it out with a lot of different timelines and a lot of different marker, marker settings. So if you do get a chance to try it, let me know how it works. If you have problems, let me know as well because I'd like to get it fixed. Um, I'm planning on using this for other videos so um, I may be enhancing it as I find more things that I want to do with it. If you enjoy my videos, make sure you click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get right back to you. Really appreciate everyone's support. Thanks for watching.